No, my five minutes would be over before I got around to drinking it. As you wish. So, tell me about yourself. I'm a novelist. Famous. Not unless you're interested in children's books. Most of my readers are age 6 to 13. I sell a lot of copies overseas. Japan was my best market, but it's all in the past. I haven't finished a book for years. So when was your last book published? That was five years ago. After that, I started another project, a children's book, of course. I thought it was going to be my best yet. It almost seemed to write itself, but I never got further than the first couple of chapters. Why was that? Health problems. It happened very suddenly. I was hospitalized. What was wrong with you? To be frank, I don't think anyone really knows. How long were you in the hospital? 47 months in all. I was locked in a room and topped up with pills for nearly four years. I barely knew who I was, let alone what was going on. And the diagnosis? Haven't you been able to make a guess by now? What medication were you on? Pretty much everything. Truxol and Flespilurine, but mainly Flipantexol. And none of them helped? The symptoms got worse. Even after I stopped taking the medication, it took weeks to find my feet. In my opinion, that's proof enough that drugs aren't the solution to my particular condition. What's different about your condition? I'm a novelist. So you say. It's probably best if I give you an example. The first thing I ever wrote was a short story for a competition. I was 13 years old at that time. My story was about a group of young people who set up a scientific experiment. I submitted the manuscript, and that's when the problem started. What kind of problems? I was at a party at a hotel in my hometown, and my best friend had just turned 14, and her parents had rented the ballroom. I slipped out to the toilet and saw in the lobby she was waiting at a reception. Your best friend? No, Julia. Julia who? Julia, a character in my story. I introduced her in the opening paragraph. Um, let's get this straight. The woman in the lobby resembled a character in your story. No, no, she did not look like Julia. She was Julia. What makes you think that? Because she repeated word for word the first line of the story. Pardon? Julia leant over the counter and said to the man at the reception, Listen, honey, I'm going to do something special. How about you fix me up with a room? Didn't it occur to you that it might be a coincidence? Sure, I gave it an awful lot of thought, but it seemed too much of a coincidence, given what happened next. Namely? Julia did exactly as I described. She stuck a pistol in her mouth and blew her brains out. Are you serious? I'm afraid so. Julia was the beginning of a nightmare that has been haunting me for nearly 20 years. Some phases are more intense than others, but I'm a writer. It's my curse. Your curse? My characters come alive. I only have to imagine a person, and I see them, hear them, and sometimes even speak to them. I call it schizophrenia, if you will, but that's the nature of my condition, my own particular mental tick. What are you working on at the moment? I don't write fiction anymore, or at least not what most people would see as fiction. How would you describe it? Well, these days I only write about myself, call it autobiography. It kills three birds with one stone. It allows me to indulge my literary bent, it gives me a way of coming to terms with my past, and it rules out the possibility of fictional characters coming alive and driving me crazy. I see. Then... Tell me about your most recent breakdown. Okay, the last character who came to life was a heroine of a children's book, a modern fairy tale. Can you tell me about the plot? It's all about a little girl called Charlotte, a delicate slip of a thing with angelic blonde hair, the sort you see on commercials for cookies and chocolate. You know the type. As hallucinations go, I can't think of worse. True, Charlotte was a darling. People found her adorable. Her father was the and they lived in a palace on an island. How did the story start? With a quest. 
One day, Charlotte fell ill, seriously ill. What were the symptoms? She lost weight, became frail and sickly, and was struck down by all kinds of mysterious infections. One by one, the king consulted every doctor in the kingdom, but no one knew what was wrong with his daughter. It wasn't long before the royal couple were frantic with worry, and meanwhile, poor Charlotte was wasting away. What happened to the girl? One day, she decided to take charge of her own destiny. She ran away from home. Oh, my God. I beg your pardon? Nothing. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Carry on. So, Charlotte set off on a quest to find the cause of her illness. I suppose you could call it a parable. A little girl refuses to give up hope and sets off into the big, wide world on her own. Are you sure you're all right? Forgive me, I should stop drinking too much tea. Um, but, but tell me more about Charlotte. How, how did the story end? What happened to her? I don't know. Surely you know how your own story ends. I told you before, I never got past the first few chapters. And that's why Charlotte came after me. That's how the nightmare started. What do you mean? What nightmare? Charlotte was the last of my characters to come alive. What we experienced together was so distressing that I broke down completely. Um, let's back up a little. Tell me exactly what happened. When did you first see Charlotte? About four years ago in Berlin. It was winter. I was on my way to the shops when I heard an awful noise. Screeching tires, the crunch of metal on metal, splintering glass. It sounded like a car accident. I remember thinking, oh my God, I hope no one's hurt. Then I turned around to see a girl in the middle of the road. She was rooted to the spot. The crash was obviously her fault. Suddenly, as if she could sense I was there, she turned around and she smiled at me and I recognized her right away. It was Charlotte, the little girl from my book. She ran over and took me by the hand. What to happen next? My mind seemed to shut down. On the one hand, I knew Charlotte was real. She had to be a delusion. On the other, she was standing right beside me. And in the end, I had to believe the evidence of my eyes. So I followed her. You followed her? Which way? Where, where did she go? Why? Does it make a difference? Um, not in the slightest. I'm sorry. Go on. If you don't mind, I'd like to take a break. I know I forced this conversation on you, but I thought I was ready and I'm not. The hallucinations were extremely traumatic and it's really not easy for me to discuss them. I understand. You won't have to worry about me bothering you again. With any luck, I can manage to leave this island tomorrow. Uh, one last question. What was the book called? I hadn't decided. I only had a working title. Nine. Nine. Charlotte was nine years old when she ran away from home. I'd like to pick up where we left off, if I may. Of course. You said that Charlotte was nearly run over by a car. Yes, that was the first time I saw her. Where did you take her after that? It was the other way around. She took me. I just followed. How would you explain her... How would you explain her motivation? She wanted to know why her story only had two chapters. She said, I want to be well again. What happens next? She told me to finish the book. In other words, you were instructed to keep writing by a character created by you. Precisely. In any case, I was perfectly honest with her. I told her I didn't know how the story ended, so there was nothing I could do. What did she say to that? She took me by the hand and promised to show me where the story started. She said, maybe you'll think of an ending when you see where it all began. Where did she take you? I don't know the name of the place, but we drove for a while to get there. And how long did it take you? Over an hour. We went through a little village. I remember seeing some old buildings, Russian architecture, I think. Can you describe what you saw? There was a Russian Orthodox chapel on a hill in some woods. We crossed a bridge, continued for a couple of kilometers on the road, then turned onto a forest track, and we drove another kilometer and stopped in a narrow lane. I parked the car there. Where did you go after that? We walked down a path. We had to go in single file, but I could see she was taking me to a building. It was a little wooden house like a cabin, only 
nicer. 